Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mashallah. Thank you so much. Uh, we just, we, we don't want to take any more time because I don't think we can follow, uh, honestly, the acts that we've had. Each one was so brilliant. I think you must all be amazed and inspired. And really, uh, someone said this is better than the Glastonbury of free thinkers. This is better than Glastonbury. Uh, and I think Dave Silverman said this is a conference of heroes. And I think that is so very true. So we just want, as a final thing, our message to the world outside is a resolution that we first wrote, but then Gita changed everything for the better. So we're pretending our words are somewhere in there, but uh, so, so I, I do want Gita to spend just a few minutes, you've all got it in your pack, just to talk about the main points, and then we'll close so you can go get drunk, all right? <laughs> Well, so much has happened that I'm looking at it quickly like, what the hell did we write? <laughs> but <clears throat> I think it's really important as a resolution because it is about the principle that we cannot have secularism, we cannot have a right to conscience and free speech unless we abandon apostasy and blasphemy laws. And in order to do that, we have to be able to criticize religious fundamentalism. I'm somebody who doesn't work on religion, uh, you know, on criticizing religion. I work on religious fundamentalism. But I absolutely defend and support the right to criticize religious texts and religion itself, um, because we need to do all that. So, you know, we've talked about 13 uh, states and territories that punish apostasy and blasphemy by death. Um, I, we note there's a tsunami of free thinking and atheism that is challenging religious fundamentalism, especially Islamism. Um, and it's a peaceful resistance. It's, it's you know, this, these simple things, because we are called, or you ex-Muslims are called, the equivalent of terrorists. Um, either offenders and inciting hatred against Islam, or actually terrorists by certain states. So it's, this is a peaceful resistance that's characterized as offensive against resistance, Islamophobic, etc. And it is ignored largely <laughs> by human rights organizations. Human rights organizations do condemn apostasy and blasphemy laws, but they don't condemn the underpinnings that is religious fundamentalism uh, which has pushed those blasphemy laws and the texts that push and justify those blasphemy laws. So if you escape the assassin's veto, you are an Islamophobe. You know, so they will, they will protect you from death and they will condemn the people who killed you or to condemn the killing, but they have never done any research on the networks of, of uh, uh, Islamists and fundamentalists and that. So we're calling for the ending of the killing, the, this conference calls for the ending of the killing of apostates and blasphemers, release those on death row in prison simply because they are atheists, free thinkers, apostates, or blasphemers, and this includes many religious people, uh, repeal apostasy and blasphemy laws, clarify that freedom of conscience and freedom of belief <coughs> guarantee the right to freedom of and fr from religion, and that religion is not an excuse for silencing dissent or threatening other rights and freedoms protect the right of freedom of expression to offend without which no human progress is possible. And then we call for, and I commit to doing this work with, and I hope some of you will join me, a declaration of principles showing that the human right to freedom of conscience is explicitly embedded in human rights documents and not limited by any right to religious belief. It is there. The Universal Declaration of Human <laughs> Rights doesn't say we are endowed rights by God. It says we're endowed with conscience and reason. It is there in our, the fundamental documents of human rights, and I think a lot of people have forgotten that, and we have to reclaim that as we fight apostasy and blasphemy. Yeah. So, so we, we'd like you to vote by clapping and cheering. Okay. Okay, is there anybody who's against the resolution? Okay, yes, okay, meet us outside. All right. <laughs> Not violent, of course. Uh, so, so just a few last words uh, that I want to say. I think, really, this has been a wonderful conference. This has been the best conference I've ever been to, of course. <laughs> That's not very good for me to say. Uh, <laughs> 
but it has been inspiring. And I think one of the things we really wanted to do at this conference is to show this, this beautiful, wonderful fight and people who are fighting and struggling despite such great odds, despite losing loved ones, despite losing their children, um, despite um, you know, having uh, their husbands killed, uh, their wives killed, despite all the trauma, Jimmy talked about it. Um, you know, so many people here have been crying and uh, just feeling so emotional about things because it is such a, an important part of our lives and so important for it to be expressed in this way. But despite all of this, what I think the message of this conference is that we are still standing, we are still resisting, we are still refusing, and that we're doing it against all odds, and that there are so many of us. And one of the things that I find really such... Um, such a sad state of affairs is that in every household, people know the names of, you know, Khamenei or Baghdadi or, you know, those, uh, the, the killers and the terrorists and those who are trying to oppress. But why isn't the names of people like Nadi Alfani, like Fazia Elias, like Zina Bel Razui, like Jamila Ben Habib, like so many of you here, why isn't it Ina Shevchenko, Walid Al Hosseini, Imad, Imad Habib Adzin? Honestly, I, I, I'm just looking at all of you, Mozan, Zainab. Why isn't your names household names? And it, and it should be, and it should be. And I think that's what this conference is about. If these names are household names, there will never be despair against totalitarianism because resistance brings hope. It brings hope and it brings change. And we are the resistance. There are many of us. And we move onwards and forwards. We never stop. We'll never stop until we win. Because we have a right to win. Because our win is a win for all humanity. Thank you. Right. Well done, Mariam. Thank you very much. Brilliant conference. Thank you, everybody, for taking part.